This is the LG Optimus 4X HD Screen Repair Guide brought to you by Repairs Universe. To perform this repair, we're going to use a few tools, including a safe open pry tool, a small Phillips screwdriver size double zero, and adhesive strips if you're replacing the touchscreen. So, to begin this repair, we're going to want to make sure the device is fully powered off. From there, we're just going to remove the back battery cover, the battery, the SIM card, and the memory card. So, once all this is done, we're going to use our small Phillips screwdriver and remove the 10 small Phillips screws located in that diagram to the left there. Now all these screws will be the same size so you don't have to worry about mixing them up. You can just throw them in a big old pile and just make sure that you label them for the back housing. And there's that final screw. I'm just going to move these off to the side. Now the next step is going to be using our safe open pry tool and we're going to separate that back housing from the rest of the device. So to do that, we're going to use our pry tool and just release the clips holding this back cover in place. So you're just going to want to slide it along that seam right here between the chrome bezel and that back housing. Just begin releasing some of those clips. Clips aren't too difficult to remove. You just want to take your time with it as some of the areas of the housing are pretty thin so you don't want to damage it. And there we go. That back housing has now been removed. There's no main components on there, so we're just going to put that to the side. And we're going to remove this bottom cover as well. This is just going to be clipped into place, so we're just going to use your safe open pry tool and just release some of those clips and lift away that cover. And there you see. Alright, so now we have three small Phillips screws that need to be removed. These will be different sizes, so make sure you keep track of these ones. Alright, now we have many connections to release from the motherboard itself, as well as a few things to watch out for. As you can see in that diagram to the left, we have marked in orange all the things that need to be removed from the housing. I'm just going to remove that bottom speaker there as well. As well as in yellow, we're going to have all the pop connectors and antenna, including that antenna right there. That's going to be your vibrate motor, which we'll release here in a little bit. And on the right side here, we have the volume button flex, which is adhered to the back housing. So it's going to get a pry tool behind the flex cable itself and just release that adhesive. And that way we can just lift it up. There we go. We're going to have a few connections, pop connectors over here, including the headphone jack right there. And it's going to be the touch screen. And it's going to be adhered down to part of the motherboard. So it's going to lift that up and pull it back. Over here we have the ear speaker, which just needs to be released from the housing. Another pop connection on the left side here. And also the main camera. This one can be left in, but just is a little bit easier if we just remove the motherboard first. And the top left we have one more pop connector. And now comes the hard part of releasing this very fragile power button flex. It's adhered underneath the button and it's very difficult to get at with a pry tool. So I'm going to swap over to a spudger tool. This has a nice pointed end allowing me to get underneath that flex cable and make sure that I don't damage it while I'm removing it from that slot in the housing. It's a bit difficult to see here, but all I'm trying to do is lift away that flex cable without ripping it. Basically I'm just trying to release that adhesive and then come at it from the side and there we go. There's that flex cable, so I'm just going to bend it down and make sure that volume button as well. And under here, I'm going to get underneath that vibrate motor and just release that adhesive. Since it is soldered onto the motherboard, it's the only way to release it. So there we go. We're now ready to lift out the motherboard. You just want to be very, very careful here as there are so many loose connections. You don't want to tug or rip any of these connections. So just take your time when removing this. And there we go. Your motherboard has now been removed as well as all the other flux cables attached. There are many components on this motherboard, including the microphone, front microphone right there, as well as the SIM card tray and everything else. But we're just going to put that to the side as we're focused on releasing the rest of the components on here, including that camera, which is just held in place with a little bit of adhesive. And we have the headphone jack, as well as the sensor cable right here. I'll be careful not to rip that. It pops out quite easily. 
put that to the side as well. This is going to be your main screen flex cable, so you just want to release all that adhesive. So that way we don't have to worry about it when we're trying to slide it through the slot in the housing. On both sides here, there's going to be a plastic frame that we can need to release. So I'm just going to use my spudger tool here and begin releasing some of those clips, holding that housing into place. As you can see with a little bit of pressure, you can see that chrome side piece bending a little bit, allowing us to release those clips. Just focus on one side and the bottom there. And you should be able to lift out the other side quite easily at that point. Just going to make sure those clips get released. And we should now be able to separate that front housing. Now we just want to be very careful here because as we release these final clips, the LCD screen is going to stay attached to this housing while the touchscreen and the chrome bezel will be separated. So we just want to make sure we get that touchscreen flex cable through that little slot in the housing. And there we go. And then we can just slide the LCD through there as well. And so there's your main housing as well as your LCD screen and your front assembly. Now just take note when I was separating this, the power button and the volume button both fell out. So you just want to make sure you keep track of those, that way you have them together for reassembly. Looking back onto the housing piece here, we just have the main front camera here, and the bottom we have our main microphone, as well as our USB port, and a few antenna connections. So we're just going to put that to the side. At this point you could replace your LCD screen, if it was needed. And the final step will just be removing the touchscreen from the front housing here. In order to do that, all we need to do is use a little bit of heat to warm the adhesive holding the touchscreen to that housing. So we're just going to use a heat gun or a hair dryer. In this case, we're just using our normal hair dryer. And we just want to make quick movements around the outside edges here just to warm up that adhesive properly. Take note of that little grommet that just flew out right there. So it should take about 30 to 45 seconds to properly warm this adhesive. Just take your time, use quick movements, don't stay in one spot for too long. Here's that grommet that fell out for the sensors up here. I'm just going to put that to the side until I reassemble it. So now the screen's properly heated, there's a few ways to go about removing the touchscreen. First way is just press through one of the camera slots here and get a little bit of lift from that adhesive. So that way you have enough room to put your pry tool in between that housing and the touchscreen there. So as you can see, that's just coming up very nicely, just releasing all that adhesive. The sides are going to have the least amount of adhesive, so it should be very easy to release that side. On the bottom here, you don't need to worry about any flex cables or anything of that sort. So you just go underneath and just release all that adhesive. If it's causing you too much trouble, be sure that you reheat it to make the adhesive nice and soft, so it should come up quite easily. And there we go, that final side just got all that adhesive released. And now we can remove the touchscreen. So there we go, the touchscreen has now been removed from the Optimus 4X HD. If you found this video useful, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe on our YouTube channel. Also be sure to check us out at repairsuniverse.com where you can find all the tools and parts used in this video. And also be sure to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for watching.